This video will be on developing confidence intervals. Um, this is really meant to be a continuation of the inverse normal videos that I created before so that you can see a link between the inverse normal and a confidence interval. But this can be used as a standalone video as well. So first of all, we're going to develop a confidence interval. So a confidence interval is an interval of random variable values that estimate the population mean. So that's what you need to know is that you are trying to estimate a population mean. Now remember, a population mean will be unknown. So we're not going to know the mean of a population. If we knew the mean of a population, we really probably wouldn't be doing uh, statistics on this. However, we're going to use a sample to get an estimate of this. And sampling, we can do. And we already know all about our sampling techniques in which to get estimates for the true population. So that's what we're going to be doing. But before, if we would get an estimate, it would just be what we would call a point estimate. Well, we're going to bound off of that point estimate, and we're going to use our normal theory, the central limit theorem, to get a range of values. So a range of values is an interval of values. So we're going to get this interval of values to which the true population mean would actually be in based upon the sample um, that we have collected or samples that we have collected and using the confident or uh, the the central limit theorem and some level of confidence. So putting some probability of which the values could be around the mean. So I'm going to call the level of confidence um, CL in what follows so you can follow a little bit more quickly and I don't have so much writing to do. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the standard normal random variable. And then we're going to use the same type of de uh, development that I used in the inverse normal to develop it through into the actual use of the, um, the confidence interval, which is to find some, for some non-standard um, normal random variable. So we're going to be using this um, along with the uh, central limit theorem because keep in mind the central limit theorem applies as long as n is greater than 30 and no matter what the distribution looks like. So no matter what the um, distribution is, as long as n is greater than 30, we know that the central limit theorem is going to work for us. So first of all, let's start with a little notation in the picture of what's going on. So what we're looking to find is the probability that between some negative z-score and some positive z-score, we have this probability, our probability being called our uh, confidence level. So this probability, what you must understand, is right smack dab in between this negative z and this positive z. Remember that this is a probability and that probability, this confidence level, is area under the curve. Now um, what I want to highlight here is that we know that if this area under the curve in the middle is this confidence level, then we also know what's out here and what's out here. So what's out here and here is something called alpha. Now some people will just use alpha as maybe a capital A, but we like to use a Greek letter or symbol alpha like this. And what alpha represents is it represents one minus the confidence level. And this one minus the confidence in level is what's here and what's here. So this is split here and here. So this is over here plus what's over here. But because this is symmetric, right, because there's symmetry here, we know that what's over here is alpha divided by 2 and what's over here is alpha divided by 2. So what's in each tail is half 
of 1 minus the confidence level. So this is just going to be whatever this is, subtract it from 1, and then divide that value by 2. And that's the area over here and the area over here, which is what we need to use for the inverse normal to come up with what these z values are. So we're going to just go based upon a 99% confidence level, which is what I used in that inverse normal, district, uh, inverse normal video for a very specific reason, so that it would help us to understand this one. So I'm going to go and I'm going to talk about that really quickly. So what we have is our confidence level here, and we have 0.99 in the middle for this confidence interval. So 1 minus 0.99 is going to give us 0 0.01. Now that 0 0.01, some of it's here, and some more of it is here. And we know because of symmetry, right, because of some symmetry, that half of it is in each of those tails. And remember, a tail is just what is in this end of the distribution and this end of the distribution. So 0 0.001 divided by 2, oops, not 0 0.001, sorry, got a little carried away there, just 0 0.01 divided by 2, that's going to give us 0 0.005. And if you'll remember right, if you have watched my other video, that's what we got, how we got our negative z here and our positive z here, because we know that the area over here is 0 0.005, and we know the area over here is 0 0.005. So we're going to find the, these values using the inverse normal distribution, or using our z table, and we're going to put in inverse normal 0 0.005, and that's going to give us a negative 2.58 when it's rounded to two decimal places. So the negative 2.58 is over here, and because of symmetry, right, because of symmetry, we know this one is equal to positive 2.58, or remember you can say, oh, well, the area below here, if this is 0 0.05, would be 0.995, and you could put in 0.995 here, and this would give you a positive 2.58. That's another way. Remember your Z table over here, see 2.58, halfway between these two is where we find 0 0.005 area. Rounded, it would be 2.58. End of discussion. Okay, so now that we have those z-scores, now what we need to do is we need to develop this. So I have a negative 2.58 here, and my standard normal random variable is right smack dab in the middle of this negative and positive value, which puts this level of confidence, 99%, smack dab in the middle of the distribution. So from here, I'm just going to be talking about this right in here. So I'm going to take this right out. So now I'm going to, be as I take it out, I'm going to switch what a z is. So this z we know is the transformation, x bar, because remember I am talking about a sample, right? So this is a sample average not just the single random variables, because I want to estimate the population mean, so the x bars, right, are going to be the point estimates for that, minus the mean, and divided by the standard error, sigma, divided by the square root of n. And then this is less than the 2.58. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve this compound inequality. And what I'm going to solve it for is for the mean, because I want to find out an interval for mu. So I'm going to solve it for mu. So 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply here, here, and here by sigma over the square root of n. So I have negative 2.58 multiplied by sigma divided by the square root of n less than the um, x bar minus mu less than 2.58 times sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, so that's my first step, multiplication rule. Now I'm going to take away this because I remember I want to leave mu in between, so I'm going to subtract x bar from here, here, and here. So now I'm going to have minus x bar minus 2.58 times sigma divided by the square root of n and this is less than a negative mu it is less than a negative x bar and then plus 2, 5, 8 times and then sigma divided by the square root of n. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to get rid of this negative. So everything's going to get multiplied by a negative 1. Now remember when we do this when we multiply by a negative 1, these inequalities have to reverse. So I'm going to get, now let's see if I can keep this on the same page. So I'm going to get a positive mu, inequalities reversed here, and a negative multiplied all the way through here, remember, is going to give me a positive x bar and a positive 2.58 times sigma divided by the square root of n and this is going to give me negative multiplied all the way through right positive here and it's going to change this to a negative 2.58 times sigma divided by the square root of n and this when we use our pancake flipper because remember a compound inequality needs to be written in this form on the right hand side is now going to become the left so this is x bar minus 2.58 times sigma divided by the square root of n and this is x bar plus 2.58 times sigma divided by the square root of n and now you have a confidence interval so this is a confidence interval for mu. And this it happens to be a 99% confidence interval. So when I say confidence interval, I'm talking about confidence interval. And this one, the 99% links to a z-score equal to plus or minus 2.58. So let's change this. This 2.58 is here and here. So your inverse normal, right, this came from the inverse normal, you're going to use your inverse normal to come up with those z-scores and those will change. So in general, your confidence interval will look like an x-bar and we can write it a different way, plus and minus coming together, plus and minus, and then a z, and some people will call this sub c or sub alpha over two, indicating that this comes to here, times your sigma divided by the square root of n. And there you go, that's a confidence interval.